Good evening, everybody. Thanks very much for uh, joining us yet again. Um, this week, what I wanted to look at is uh, the backdrop for uh, commodities in general, basically using copper as a bit of a proxy for commodities in general. Um, and just looking at the price action that's developed over the last few weeks and the potential that having seen a failed reversal develop, and we'll look at um, what we actually mean by that in a second, what the actual risks for copper and commodities in general against the current backdrop that uh, that we have. So you know, when we look at copper, this is a weekly chart going back to March uh, 2020. And you can see that effectively, really since April last year, the market having an attempted to break higher has seen quite a significant um, failure of strength. We've broken below the uh, 2020 or the July, August 2021 lows. And that sort of reflected further significant deterioration within the overall structure for commodities in general. And we've consistently seen a decline over the last few months. Now, the question obviously is, what can technicals do to help us engaging this type of price action and to highlight when we're beginning to see some sort of evidence of a positive reversal in sentiment that can bring about a more sustained recovery, not only for copper, but I think in, for commodities in general. So when we look at the weekly chart, we can see that obviously the market is, is for the last four weeks that this chart runs through, has seen significant declines developing. Now, from a technical perspective, we would use Fibonacci retracements to highlight where the risks are beginning to uh, develop in terms of where the next main support points are. And Fibonacci retracements are set retracement levels, set percentages of price movement, where we anticipate buyers within a downside move being um, active once more and bringing about the potential of reversal activity. So we would take a significant low, which was the March 2020 low, together with the significant high, which was uh, March this year, and we would run the set retracements, the set percentage retracements developing in terms of that price strength. So we'd look at 38%, 50% or the midpoint and the 62% level. And it's these retracements that we would focus on within significant periods of decline to highlight the potential of support points. Now, you can see that as the market sold off recently, that we broke relatively easily below this 38% retracement point and extended the decline towards what would be the next technical level around the 351.30, which is the 50% retracement of the entire upside move. You'll also notice that it coincides with a congestion area, a consolidation area, um, and previous lows back from January 2021. So again, this would add to the significance of the potential support and the possibilities of some sort of reversal activity beginning to materialize. And what actually happened the following week, and this was a couple of weeks ago, was that the market saw further selling pressure. So we continued this original decline, but we actually then over the course of the week formed a potential bullish reversal pattern within candlesticks called the hammer pattern. Now, a hammer pattern is basically where the market accelerates sharply lower and then finds support and rejects from that level. So effectively, what we're actually looking at is initial continuation of the very sharp decline. And this is we've zoomed in on, on that area. We see acceleration of the downside move and buying support actually develops and buyers are active within the market to see a significant recovery, leaving what's called a large lower shadow. So it confirms the support point at this lower level. And the week's open close range is within the upper third of the week's range. And this highlights the potential hammer pattern and the possibility of a more positive shift in sentiment. You'll also notice that the rally managed to close just above this 50% retracement point, meaning that it held on a weekly closing basis. Now with any candlestick reversal, what we need to see is a further positive candle the following week to actually confirm this positive sentiment shift. 
And actually what happened, and this was last week's um, activity, we opened around the 50% retracement point and saw further selling pressure and a continuation of the decline. So the potential reversal pattern that was materializing within copper and incidentally within a number of other commodity markets as well, we were seeing these possibilities of reversals forming, but they too weren't confirmed. And the market accelerated further to the downside and actually last week tested the 62% retracement, the 315.13 level, which again is a, an important support, technical support focus and a possible hold level from which the market bounced back uh, into the week's close. So the important information here is that, yes, we've failed to confirm what was this possible reversal, but we've also now, within this non-confirmation week last week, seen a test of another technical support point. And this means that we need to watch price action more closely. So if we take a look at the daily chart, we can see this sell-off, which actually tested that 62% retracement point, and if we look at price action, actually look to form a further similar type of reversal pattern. So in other words, we, we extended the original decline, we sold off, made new lows, rejected that level, and again, a small upper clo open close relationship, the real body of the candle, is within the upper limits of the day's range. That was then followed by another positive candle. So having tested this significant long-term retracement support, we do have the potential of a reversal pattern beginning to materialize, which is obviously more constructive and the potential of, of a more sustained recovery, especially while we're above that long-term 62% retracement point. However, you'll notice the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that a couple of weeks ago, we actually did see a similar sort of reversal pattern. And we saw a further positive candle the next session to see what looked like confirmation. However, this reversal pattern failed. And I'm sorry to say not every reversal pattern is fulfilled in terms of seeing the reversal in sentiment. And this is a reason why it's very important to, to monitor price action very closely and to make sure that you have stops actually active within the market as soon as you place, in this case, a long trade. Because if the market and this reversal pattern does fail, and we then start to see breaks of the, the uh, stop level, which would have been below this previous low, then that would then obviously reduce the risk within the market and take us back to the sidelines as the market then extends and continues to move lower. So while we do have this potential reversal pattern building within the daily chart at present, we do need to watch price action more closely. So again, you know, if we do start to break below these lows, then the risk would be that we could extend the decline and what is still a negative longer term pattern of lower highs and lower lows. So the potential is there for the reversal patterns to form not only in copper, but also other commodity markets as well. But we need to watch price action more closely. And if, for instance, if we see a stronger dollar beginning to materialize, then that could well weigh further on commodity prices and see selling pressure materialize. So we need to watch price action more closely. The potential is there, having tested this long-term retracement point in copper, but we need to see how the market defends this recent low or this previous high, and if that starts to give way, then a more sustained recovery could well be on the cards. So that's the technical commentary for, um, for this week. Thanks very much for listening, and I'll uh, see you again in two weeks' time. Thank you.